there go the aft fin checks at the base of the rocket. Our astronauts can feel that. They are sitting at the top of a 60-foot rocket, about 20 meters tall. T minus one minute. And there you can just see slightly there the gimbling engine at the base of the rocket. All right, everybody, Chris Blossom, and Glenda Breeze, Audrey Powers, and William Shatner are about to go where very few humans have gone before. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time to launch this rocket. Godspeed, New Shepard. Minus 10, 9, 8, 7, 6. Five, four, command engine start. Two, one. with the altimeter at the base of the screen as well as the speedometer. They are gaining speed on their climb to space. We have confirmed max Q. This is when the, ma the, the aerodynamic stresses on the vehicle were at their maximum. Thank you again, everybody, for joining us live for New Shepard's second human flight with Audrey Powers, William Shatner, our customers, Glenn DeVries, and Chris Bosshausen on board. They are well on their way to space so far. A nominal flight, a clean burn on our Blue Engine 3. New Shepard giving them a beautiful flight to space this morning. The rocket is climbing towards an altitude. We're aiming just over the Karman line, the internationally recognized line of space of 100 kilometers. That is about 328,000 feet and a gorgeous view down the rocket. And now we've had main engine cut off. The BE-3 engine has shut off. And in just a moment, we're going to separate the capsule from the booster. And at that point, our astronauts will have the opportunity to get out of their harnesses and enjoy the beauties of zero G. Let's wait to listen. And there you can see a clean separation between the capsule and the booster. And there you can see the capsule from the top of the booster. They are continuing their ascent over the Karman line. You'll know when they hit apogee, when the speed hits zero. And there they are, over 328,000 feet, over 100 kilometers. Welcome to space. The newest astronauts on board our crew capsule.
And there they are. They have hit, just about hit their apogee at about 351,000 feet. And while we don't have apogee, I can just imagine Jackie, they are having the time of their lives. Thank you again, everybody, for joining us live from West Texas. So far, a nominal flight for our second human crew. So exciting, Jackie, to have sent Captain Kirk himself, William Shatner, to space. I cannot wait to hear his commentary upon return, as well as our two customers, Chris Bosshausen from Australia, to all the fans turning, tuning in from uh, down under. A big shout out to you guys, as well as Glenn DeVries and our very own Audrey Powers. They are coming back home. The booster, of course, is going to beat the capsule back home. It is more aerodynamically shaped, of course, at the base of the, the capsule. It's kind of a, a blunt end, so it's less aerodynamic. What we're going to see coming up shortly is at the top of the rocket, we have the ring fin. The, uh, the, there is uh, some what we call the pie fins that extend from the ring fin. Uh, as well as the drag brakes, the, the, uh, the pie fins, the wedge fins, help stabilize the vehicle, uh, like kind of like the feathers at the back of an arrow. And then uh, you will also see the drag brakes. And as you mentioned, Jackie, it cuts the velocity dramatically. There you can see the wedge fins are out. Here we see the descent. We are going to expect the BE-3 engine to relight just at about 3,600 feet or about 1,200 meters above ground level. Let's wait for that now. The drag brakes have deployed. And here we come, New Shepard. provided a beautiful flight to space for our second human crew. Wow, I, I, that gets me every time we do this live down here in Texas. The sonic boom is so cool. Drag brakes are folding back in, as have the wedge fins. Just looks like you could uh, fuel her up and go again. What do you think, Jackie? And even when you know to expect the sonic boom, it still catches you off guard every time. Talk about a rumble. A beautiful sight of our new Shepard rocket there in the West Texas desert. But of course, the show is not over. The capsule is descending. We are waiting for first the drogue break, excuse me, the drogue chutes to deploy. Those are very much like the guide parachutes. They will subsequently be uh, followed by the, uh, the main parachutes that will fully, that will full, first reef and then fully inflate. And there go the drogue parachutes. And here come the mains. Whew, what a flight. <laughs> You can already start to hear the cheers from outside the, our, uh, our stage here in West Texas. I just 
through a piece of Bob Cola, and she's a lot look out your window on me. Oh, yeah, yeah, she is. You know what? I can't see the boost, though. Where is it? Oh, it's on the it's gonna rotate. Like anything to describe. All right, we, we got <laughs> we got less than a thousand feet. All right, great. Let's go. Oh. And here comes our crew back into the desert. Everybody. Newest astronauts: 596, 97, 98, and 99. Stand by touchdown. Stand by touchdown. And capsule touchdown. Welcome back. The newest astronauts, Audrey Powers, William Shatner, our customers, Glenn DeVries, and Chris Poshausen. What a day for you. Welcome back. I cannot wait to talk to them, Jackie, and just get what they experienced up there this morning. What a clean and beautiful flight from the rocket for our astronauts. What an absolutely stunning flight. And I also loved hearing that audio of them on their way back about how this experience was for them. And I can't wait to hear their stories. Well, you, you heard William Shatner say, this is like nothing. I've ever experienced before. So coming from a man who in theory has experienced space who for has decades. Who has gone warp speed and traveled the entire intergalactic universe. <laughs> this was like nothing he's ever seen before. What a day for our astronauts. So now our team is preparing landing safety operations and recovery of our astronauts from the crew capsule. We'll be on the ground at the landing site to follow the action in just a bit. Maybe even talk to the world's newest astronauts. Some absolutely breathtaking stuff. And I'll note that you're gonna see our, uh, the recovery team show up very shortly because we actually send them out before the capsule has landed because through our modeling, we get very, by now we're very, very good at analyzing where the capsule is going to come down. Very given where precise we know. on that land. Exactly, where, where the winds are. And so we're going to see the recovery team come out there. And of course, they will also be joined by some of their friends and family to watch as they emerge from the 